And then you're just going to have to determine, okay, what are those other key factors? How much time am I going to have to spend? How much money am I going to have to put in this? Am I going to have a lot of detail, little detail? All those things will be factors. That's how the investor DNA was built. That's how we utilize it to help people figure out what is the best fit for them. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast, a show where we interview high voltage entrepreneurs growing and scaling through e-commerce, real estate, and other wealth without Wall Street ventures, showing you the path to making your first or next million. All right, guys, welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast again, where we're all about talking about money today, making moves without needing a restraining order against your banker. So today's guest is Russ Moneybags Morgan. That's how we're going to refer to him today. He knows more about finance than Warren Buffett knows about buffets. So we're going to dive in and start asking some questions to him today about passive income investing, DNA, things we're doing in the business world in terms of opportunities. And then we're going to just dig right in, know a little bit more about you, get some of your experience. So let's just kick this off by saying we know that money can't buy happiness. People tell us it's that, but it can buy you a decent TikTok following or maybe some real estate properties, right? So why don't we dig into what money can buy you? And why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, man, money bags. That's the first. Money bags, man. Morgan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I don't know if I know more about buffets and Warren Buffett. I have heard that Warren Buffett drinks like seven or eight Diet Cokes a day, which I, I, have I heard can't imagine that. Well. Con- <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine that amount of consumption of aspartame is good for you, but he somehow made it work, right? So you know. I, maybe it's just petrifying him for old age and we're missing out on it completely. <laughs> like maybe he's going to live to be like 150 for that reason because he's just going to be all petrified. That has nothing to do with my background, which okay. my background right. is all about just figuring it out as I go, like we're doing in this podcast, I think. I, <laughs> the part that's probably worthy is I, I actually was on Wall Street. Our brand is Wealth Without Wall Street. So I worked for a financial planning firm, actually became a certified financial planner. My objective, Neil, was to help people grow their wealth by investing in the stock market, doing all the typical plans, retirement, everything else. And I was learning as an advisor why I was using their money to do it. And for about four and a half years, I was having an amazing amount of success. And I got in the industry right to, in 2004. So you might imagine why I was having so much success early on. And then yeah. whenever the market crashed, clearly I realized <laughs> that it was not me is the economic genius. It was a rising market. And yeah. I quickly learned that the path to success had nothing to do with accumulation. And mm. it took me a while. I met a man when I was down in Orlando, Florida at an event who was teaching people how to become their own banker was the name of his book. Okay. And the real idea was the number one obstacle keeping us from being financially free is lack of access to cash. And it's because of guys like me in the Wall Street world who were taking their money and invested in things that they couldn't touch, whether it was restrictions or penalties or surrender charges or variability in the price of the market, which you wouldn't want to necessarily get access to. And then secondly, I was following the traditional advice to pay off all the debt that you have. So all the excess cash they had, they were using it to pay down debts and they never had access to money. So even if there was an opportunity, they wouldn't even be able to take advantage of it. But most people, what happens is they don't even see opportunities because they haven't trained their brain because they don't have access to cash. And I, I learned about all these things starting in 2009 and it took a couple of years of doing this myself, putting my money in a place that I could touch it. To well, then I started seeing opportunities. We started a podcast. We started a, a whole company and community that's built around finding passive income streams that could exceed our monthly expenses so that we can do what we want, when we want, and where we want. So that's Love the small, it. short. The small and the short of it. And your partner, Joey, has been on here before. Joey, you call him the stallion, Murray. How did that, how did you, where did you get that from? It's self reclaim man. He told me that when he self-proclaim. was in high school, that he has an Italian background, his parents from Buffalo, New York, and his dad, whenever he got turned 16, gave him like this 66 Mustang convertible, baby blue or something like that. And on the front of it had an airbrush tag that said Italian Stallion. And so that, <laughs> like whenever we started our podcast, uh, I said, what do you want your handle to be? He said, man, Italian Stallion. I thought, you're anything but an Italian stallion, but we're going to call you that. And so That's I awesome. bought him an actual uh, a license plate cover. It goes around the license plate that has the Italian flag, it says Italian stallion on it. His <laughs> wife absolutely hates it, but it's fun. And he's a That's good sport. Awesome. And yeah, he's a great guy. 
So where we are right now, obviously you came through some tough times with the real estate market change and you shifted and you've moved, what, almost 10 years now in the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, we started the podcast in 2017. So we're six years in, but we broke out of the firm that we were with in 2015. So we're okay. eight years removed from that. Okay. A lot has changed in that time frame, And yeah. where we're setting at right now, I'm sure there's a lot of questions about whether or not to invest or whether to hold cash or whether it's a good time to step out. You know, borrowing from what Buffett, I'm going to totally, I'm going to totally get this, but it's something around and when people attempt to be fearful, that's when others are greedy. And when you're greedy, that's when you should, others should be fearful. Am I getting that right? I'm pretty close. Yeah. Something um, about blood in the water. There's definitely blood in the water <laughs> <laughs> and there are plenty of sharks <laughs> right. swimming around 401ks and other places and banks and stuff. In your opinion, what should somebody be looking at right now? And as we're doing this in 2023, what should they be doing? Holding on to more cash, getting rid of debt, investing into more. What do you, what's your opinion on all that? I'm going to hate to be cliche here, but I'm going to take you through a process, right? Because to me, the only way to make this work is you have to understand first, what is it that you're trying to accomplish and why that's important. And yep. you were at our event that we did in mm -hmm. January, 2023, and we did it for the hundred something people that were in the room that. You need to understand your why, because if your why is not greater than your why not, it's not going to matter. And I know this to be true. I was talking to a guy the other day. He spent two years chasing a real estate dream. And he's, mm -hmm. man, I was doing five different things and nothing was working. And I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working. Was it me? Was it the market? And he said, my wife and I went on a three-day retreat. We read this book called The Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold, And we decided that we needed to have a vivid vision. We needed to have this purpose. And we went away for three days and wrote down all our ideas and what we wanted to accomplish. And he said, amazingly, after I did that, I really was very clear on what I wanted in life and why I wanted it. And then he's had this amazing track record. He's grown like $50 million in assets in the real estate space mm. within the multifamily. And mm. he, he just talked about all these things. It's just a, a real clear picture to me that when people know what they want, they will understand why every time they meet adversity or obstacles, why it's okay to keep going, right? Because we're not going to yeah. have rainbows and unicorns to get there. So first, you got to understand what you want. And if you don't understand, you're, it won't matter. I can't give you the path to financial freedom. It's not just a cookie cutter. Just do this and it'll be success. Right. The second thing that you got to do, and you said, it, d does people need to be getting their money in a place they can access? And that's 100% true. Because if your money is in places that you can't touch it, even if there was an opportunity, how could you take advantage of it, right? Mm -hmm. All your money is invested in things that you can't touch or you can't get access to other money because of the money that you've built in it, right? Because people are building amazing e-commerce brands with you guys. And those businesses should have lines of credit, right? They should be able to leverage those dollars that they can't necessarily have now unless they sell the business, but they could get lines of credit against them, right? There should be other things in our life so we can touch money. And we use a lot, utilize a tool called infinite banking, which is really just a safe place to store cash until we find asset. Then, and only then when you have clear why you have your money in a place that you can access, then you start to figure out who you are as an investor, Neil. Yeah. And liquidity, right? How much to keep on hand for opportunities or investment opportunities or time in market. We have this mentality we've been taught. And so was I as a kid to grow up, save. By the time you get to 64, you can access that and they sell you on the compounding interest in times. And some of that is a reality and others is not a reality. What happens if you need that cash sooner? What happens if you're 42 and you need it? Um, you're stuck in a situation where your liquidity obviously keeps you from getting access to that. And so what we've talked about before, I know you brought this up and we talked about it in January, is your investor DNA, which is where you're yeah. talking. Can you unpack that a little bit more for us as we can dig into what that means? He had an investor DNA he discovered. How do you discover that? Yeah. So the investor DNA is where it's going to tell you where to invest, right? It's going to inform the decision because when you understand who you are as an individual, then you will be able to make decisions. So for instance, we utilize a personality assessment DISC. Most people has maybe taken that, Myers-Briggs, Culture mm -hmm. Index, Enneagram. There's all these different strategies out there. It gives us information about each other. But what Joey and I found is that, that people were not utilizing who they were naturally to invest. So we took this tool, DISC, and with it, it informs who we are. So then we went out and started interviewing people who were the best of the best in what in the different spaces in which they were investing. And we started asking them questions, Neil. Hey, how would you 
look at short-term rental? How would you look at land flipping? How would you look at e-commerce investing? How would you look at private lending or investing in syndications or doing franchises, whatever it may be? There's lots of different options. And we asked them, what do you think are all the pros from your vantage point to the thing that you're doing. And when they gave us a list and we said, okay, now tell us all the cons. What are all the things that you don't like about it, even though that you're doing it? And so what we did is we basically compiled this big, huge list of things. So there's eight or 10 different investment options that most people are using. And so we decided, okay, what we'll do, Neil, is we'll help you understand who you are as an investor by doing this assessment and then looking at the pros and cons list. For instance, do you know your investor DNA profile? Are you a, on a disc? Are you an I? Is that your profile? I'm a DI, hands You're down. You're a DI. Okay. Yep. All right. So yep. a D. I actually had a bit of S in there too, but the C was really low. <laughs> All right. So, so I, when it comes to, to the conscientious side, that is not me. So that's dominant, inspiring, and supportive is of, my, puts me into a persuader role, if I remember correctly. So for instance, what does a D, D likes benefits? D likes to be in control. They like quick results. They like the oh, ability to expand the business. What is the things that D's don't like? The <laughs> detail, organized, analytical, <laughs> thorough, pretty much everything that Reed and my wife are. Yeah. <laughs> they've been around for me for so long is because they are. The SC, conscientious, stable, steady, going, you, detail, organized, find a path, get there, go, get it done. Like, you don't ah. like this. No, you don't like the slow process either, right? You don't like the ability no. to not be able to right. dig in it. You don't like to have to go super deep into the due diligence. And you definitely don't want to be really on the customer service in the nitty gritty maintenance side of things, right? So there's, there's nope. little issues that we all have just based upon we see the world. Well, because of that, right. so our investor DNA, we use this tool to help us say, okay, based upon who you are, let's narrow it down to two. Most of the time, people, where they get stuck, Neil, is that they look at Joey and I's passive income report and they see 10 or 12 different investment ideas that we've been personally doing. And they think, oh, that I need 10 or 12. I need to diversify because that's a, a fancy word that the the market tells us that we should do. Well, no, diversification actually is a terrible thing. Diversification can actually decrease our return. Russ, Wanda, you guys have 12 different things you invest in because we run an information business, right? Like our job Mm -hmm. is to help give people insight to different opportunities, right? But we are utilizing these personally to build passive income. When I go into those different strategies, what I look for is when I'm talking to somebody is how do we narrow it down to two? So I'm just going to give an example. So if I was looking at this Mm -hmm. from your perspective, I'm a D, right? I'm going to say, okay, looking at it from a D perspective, I want to be hands-on. I want to be involved in a business that can scale. E-commerce is a business, right? It makes sense why you chose that one. What would another potential business, maybe like a land flipping or short-term rental, something like that, that I could be involved in, that could scale. Now I'm going to have to be in the details of it. Because right. I can hire people to go clean it and I can hire people to manage it. All I need to be focused on is who the person is and where the properties are, acquiring them and turning them over. Right. And then you're just going to have to determine, okay, what are those other key factors? How much time am I going to have to spend? How yep. much money am I going to have to put in this? Am I going to have a lot of detail, little detail? All those things will be factors. That's how the investor DNA was built. That's how we utilize it to help people figure out what is the best fit for them. Super smart. It works really well with that profile of the disk assessment. We use it too, because I've over the years learned that for people who are interested in e-com, they do need to fit into an, a, one of those areas. And they're typically going to be on the organizational detail oriented side. They're not necessarily on that DI side unless they have someone to support them. So if I have couples come in or individual solopreneurs, I'm usually trying to pair them up with people or even get them involved in the inner circles of our mastermind to ensure they pair up with somebody who is more like that. Because what you'll find, again, is a DI like me can start things, get them moving without a great support behind them, without a process in place, and without somebody who's detail-oriented and task-driven, it'll fall apart. And so many people don't understand that, at least this particular business model. I know others can do the same thing, but e-com cannot work that way. So if you look at people like Daniel and others, you'll find very quickly they have that SC compatibility in there with, a, with an I in there because they're very good at the detail-oriented daily, weekly, monthly tasks. And I think that's a key point part that you're mentioning as well, is that doesn't mean that we will only be successful based upon one thing, but it may show us who we should partner with Yeah, to have partners. Right. You talked about your spouse, you talked about Reed, 
who had traits that you did not possess, which that allows for businesses to maybe prosper. Any of that with books like Rocket Fuel that talks about the integrator and the visionary. Yeah. Reading a book right now on the second in command and what a CEO needs to be in a business. And really it's, it needs to be what the CEO doesn't possess. I think that whenever we look at our investor DNA, we look at our opportunities, the world is full of opportunities. Yep. We just need to see how we interact with them at the highest level and will be filled up by the thing that we're doing. Because there's people that have worked in businesses for 45 years and were amazingly successful, but they hated their life, hmm. right? Because they just were doing a job that they were good at, but they didn't enjoy. Yep. Man, wouldn't it be so much more amazing for us to find things that we do enjoy that we are good at and allow other people to handle those other issues? And I think that's what we can do when we know who we are. And it's a discovery process that trips people up at times because they're trying to figure out how they fit into it. And I think you said it well at the event. You said that there's two minds that equal one, right? You and Joey each have one part of the mind and because you equal one mind. And that's how Reed and I have worked for the last 10 years is that we're both halves of a different coin, but we end up on the same page with that strength. So if somebody doesn't have that, how can you normally give them direction and advice towards that? What's the ultimate outcome if they don't have that supportive network? Yeah, so we built a, a whole course around this and a whole community around this, Neil. So people, if they want to go to wealthwhitewallstreet.com forward slash voltage, they could actually get access to our community. And inside the community, they can go through the passport, which shows them and helps them understand what their why is, can help them create written goals. Most people don't have written goals. They don't understand what they want to be when they grow up. <laughs> I, mean, I say that it, kind of tongue in cheek, but they also don't know how much money do I need to be saving? What is my written monthly savings goal? What does my passive income need to be to exceed my monthly expenses? And then the next thing that they do is they usually connect with one of our coaches and they go through a tool called the Pathfinder, which helps them understand their investor DNA, which helps them understand what's the right next thing I need to be working on. Oh, you guys mentioned this word infinite banking. What does that mean? So inside of our community, we basically have built it out to be very process oriented oriented so people could take one step after another. And I've been through both of those. They're fantastic. I actually talked to Ernie a few weeks ago. I'm going through the infinite banking stuff right now with Katie because okay. we're looking into how do we structure all that too. So I'm learning some of that as we go. I know we've talked about it over the years. I just never fully got into it. Now I'm going through it. So I'm getting a better picture of where you guys are, which is fantastic to get that inside information and to know it. And I would encourage all of you to do that again, wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash voltage. Go check it out. So I got three questions to wrap us up here to kind of give some perspective on, on Russ a little deeper. Not really personal questions, like you need to know if your boxes are briefed. But the end of this, in terms of 2023, what would be your ultimate advice for this year? If someone was listening and said, okay, you know what? I've got the rest of this year to do something. What should I be doing? What's my top priority from your opinion, Russ? And if you know what you're trying to accomplish, then do you have the support to get there? If you don't know what to... If you know where you're investing at, but you need more capital, maybe that's the issue. It's hard to say. Neil, you're giving me an ex like such a wide variety. Be like, hey, what? go to Amazon and pick which product you want, right? You're <laughs> a very wide, open <laughs> softball. But it's I, a I mean, softball that let you lob anything into that yeah, home. I know you're just like, <laughs> hey, he can talk. I'm giving him a, not a narrow angle. Rocks, man. Broad the, the problem with that is I just, my mentor, he used to say, man, when given an opportunity like what you just gave me, it's, it's like being a mosquito at a nudist colony. I know what to do, but I don't know where to start. <laughs> Everything works delicious. <laughs> We're back to that buffet again. How do we get back to the buffet again? It depends, right? I just got off the phone with the guy who is in your, who's in your world, right? And yep. what is he doing? He's literally just doubling down on his business. He's... He joined our passive income mastermind because he wanted to better understand what people at higher levels have done to in the other places of their life, right? Not just the business, the active business, but he needed to understand how were they building infrastructure that would be generationally passing. And so yeah. he's building networks for somebody who's there. That may be a right fit for somebody like you just said, hey, look, I've been successful at building these businesses. But I haven't set up infinite banking yet. If you haven't set up infinite banking, you got to go back to square one because all our money has to run through some pool. And the key is who's going to own the pool and who will make profit off the pool of the money, right? That's right. Who owns and 99% of all Americans run their money through checking accounts that they earn zero off of. But we realize the banks aren't there for free. They're not nonprofits. 
But then we asked the question, where do banks put their money? They have hundreds of billions of dollars in these cash value life insurance policies, which you and I are now knowing that's the concept of infinite banking. And we could utilize that same tool and we yep. could be owners of these insurance companies as policyholders. And so are, we can run our money through that. Man, that may be the right thing. For the person who doesn't know what the heck they're doing and what they want to be when they grow up, they need to get a clear vision in order to be able to take action. Find it's still so hard for me to tell you. Let me give you some myself. specific questions then. How about this one? More specific. What is the best piece of advice you ever heard? The best piece of advice I've ever heard? Mm-hmm. Time wounds all heals. Ooh, very wisely. <laughs> <laughs> Very wisely. See, that's probably the best piece of advice I've ever got. Very wisely. That's also broad stroke. Marry what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. What's the Mouse. worst piece of advice you've ever heard? <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Marry your college sweetheart. Oh my goodness! You should give me these questions ahead of time. I oh could've... come on, they are. <laughs> you've never got bad advice ever. Oh man, yeah, I've gotten. I've yes. Here's a, here's the say we have on our show is. All advice is garbage and should be treated as such. <laughs> Why? I mean, it, again. No, here's the key. Okay. Advice yep. comes from where? It comes from your opinion. That is right. True. And you assume that I possess the same network, the same resources, the same background, all the things that you possess to get there. And that's why we tell people, you know what YPO is, right? Young professionals, a professional organization. Yeah. yeah. So it's CEOs for 130 something countries across the world. It's 30,000 people. You have to have 2 million in annual income and 50 plus employees to be in this group. And right. for you and I, which we probably wouldn't qualify, we have to be under age 45. Oh, suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I'm under 45. What are you talking about? Who's done? Wait, what's this? Oh. Judging me on my age. What are you talking about? I said probably. I knew I wasn't. I just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not under 45. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's one thing. The reason I bring this up is that they have a thing within young within YPO called forums. And forums yeah. is an environment where seven to 10 people within a group get in a very small group and what they meet once a month. They talk about the top 5% of their life and the bottom 5% of their life. But everything that they ask questions on, the response of the group can only be experiential, right? Like you can't give advice. So if I go to you and I say, Neil, I'm thinking about starting a new business. And I'm looking for blah, blah, blah. What's your thoughts? Your thoughts can only be, here's been my experience in something similar. You can't say, here's what I would do. And so I always, the best advice, the worst advice is that you take advice. You should listen and you should listen for experience. And you should sure. then try to figure out, does your situation allow for that experience to benefit you? And I, I love the fact that you should borrow information instead of having to pay retail for it, but not believing that all advice is one created equally because you don't possess probably what they possess in order to do it. Yeah, that, that is good advice. Folks, if you've gotten anything from today, hopefully we'll go share this. <laughs> I'm sure you got some advice from today, but as we said, take it with a grain of salt because it may not be the best advice for you today. <laughs> But Russ has laid down some good stuff with us today. Absolutely. Some amazing thoughts and some advice for those of you who are on it. If you are a mosquito at a nudist colony, you need to go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash voltage and find out where to take a bite out of your investor DNA, do your disk profile, start figuring out that path. If you need to get more liquidity and cash flow, if you want to become your own banker and learn how to get basically past the banks, loan yourself money, go put a business up, do all kinds of amazing things. You got to go check that out. Russ Moneybags Morgan is over there. He's going to help you out. We got Joey the Italian Stallion. I know there's Ernie, but not the guy from, I keep thinking of Ernie, like Ernie from Mystery. Sesame Street, but he's not Ernie from Sesame Street. He's so much cooler than that. Go check those guys out. Find out what they're doing. Take some of this information today and hopefully go apply it to your life and business. You will be much better off if you do. Russ, thanks for coming on, buddy. Neil, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. If you like this episode, please share it with people you think will enjoy it as well. Thank you for listening and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of High Voltage Business Builders.